In this lesson, we're going to learn about what is known as a coordination game. If the prisoner's dilemma, as I mentioned before, is the most common game known to game theorists and those learning game theory, then the coordination game is the second most common. So the story behind this game is that we're in the time before cell phones and two people, two decision makers, decided they were going to go out, but they forgot where they were going to meet up. This is sometimes called the meetup game. So what the players can do, the decision makers can do, is they can decide where they go. Again, they don't have cell phones or anything like that, so they can't call one another. And they can either choose to go to the concert or the sporting event. And both players face the same decision. So why is this called the meetup game? Well, both players would prefer to go to the same place, right? Because when they both go to the concert, they get positive payoffs, or when they both go to the sporting events, they get positive payoffs. If player two goes to the concert, but player one goes to the sporting events, they go to different places, they both get zero payoff. So they're trying to meet up. The little twist on this game is that player two prefers they both go to the concert because when they both go to the concert, he gets two. However, when they both go to the sporting event, player two only gets one. And then player one is the opposite. He prefers that they both go to the sporting event because he'll get two. But if they both go to the concert, he'll still be happy and get one, but less happy than if they both went to the sporting event. So let's first review last lesson. Is there a dominant strategy? Remember, a dominant strategy is a strategy or an action for a player that is best in terms of highest utility, regardless of what the other player does. So let's check for player two. If player one chooses to go to the concert, place C, what does player two prefer? Well, he prefers also to go to the concert. He prefers two over zero. Okay, what about when player one would go to the sporting event? Would player one choose to go to the concert or the sporting event? Well, player two would choose the sporting event because one is greater than zero. Therefore, player two's best action does depend on what player one does. So player two does not have a dominant strategy. The same argument can be made for player one. So neither player in this game has a dominant strategy. So let's go through and check each box to see if they're in Nash equilibrium. So suppose both players choose to go to the concert, CC. Is this a Nash equilibrium? So if they both are going to the concert, does player two have an incentive to deviate? Well, holding player one's strategy at C, player two, if he deviated, would earn zero instead of two. So player two does not have an incentive to deviate because he prefers two over zero. How about player one? Holding player two strategy at C, constant at C, does player one have an incentive to switch his strategy, to switch his action from C to S? Well, if he does that, he will earn zero instead of one, which is bad, he prefers higher. So player one does not have an incentive to deviate. So look at that, right away, we found a Nash equilibrium. Okay, how about player one going to the concert and player two going to the sporting event? Well, this is easy to see. Holding player one's strategy at concert, does player two have an incentive to change his strategy from sporting event? Of course he does, because if player one is going to the concert and player two is going to the sporting event, but instead changed his action to go to the concert, he would earn two instead of zero. So therefore, he would have an incentive to deviate, so this cannot be a Nash equilibrium. And we can make the same argument. I encourage you to do it. We can make the same argument up here. When player two goes to the concert, player one goes to the sporting event, they will both have an incentive to deviate. How about down here? They're both going to the sporting event. Let's see if player two has an incentive to deviate. So if player one, holding player one strategy constant at sporting event, does player two have an incentive to change his strategy from sporting event to concert? Well, if he does that, he would earn zero instead of one, which is not a good thing. So player two does not have an incentive to deviate. He prefers one over zero. How about player one? Holding player two's strategy, at, strategy constant at sporting event, does player one have an incentive to change his action from sporting event to concert? And of course he doesn't because two is greater than zero and player one prefers higher payoffs. So player one does not have an incentive to deviate. So when they both go to the sporting event, neither player has an incentive to deviate. That means 
this is also a Nash equilibrium. So this tells us, or this gives us a key insight. Nash equilibrium, the, the Nash equilibrium, or we can say Nash equilibria are not necessarily or in general unique. Or in other words, games can have more than one Nash equilibrium. Some games only have one, but others can have more than one. And we see this through the coordination game.